stroke length. This one's a little bit more tricky. Right, what do I mean? Stroke length is the distance the rod tip travels on the back cast to the forward cast. Some people mix it up. They call that the rod arc and they call stroke length the distance the rod hand travels. I like not to use two terms to describe one thing. So I just call this the stroke length, the distance the rod tip is traveling. I just find it much more clear, less confusing. Okay, now we know what it's called, stroke length. Let's have a look at what I'm doing. I've got approximately 14 feet of line out the tip of the rod. I'm gonna put the line in front of me now, and I'm gonna start moving the rod tip back and forward, back and forward, as though I'm making a side cast. Here we go, back and forward, back and forward. And you can see that the line follows the path the rod tip takes, but the line is not extending fully, is it? Here's my back cast stopping point. Here's my forward cast stopping point. And those two points there, it looks like approximately, I don't know, eight feet. That eight foot of stroke length is not enough to get that fly line unrolling properly, is it? Okay, here's the mistake that most people do. They decide, okay, I need to put more power in, which you can do, watch. Keep the stroke length the same, but put more power in. But look at the line, it's unmanageable. It's bursting around with energy and we're putting slack into it. The better solution, and the solution I want you to practice, is to increase your stroke length. So if we know that the starting point was here and the forward cast point was there, if we now increase that stroke length to over this yellow cone and over this red cone, for instance, let's see what happens to that approximately 14 foot of line now. No more energy. I've just increased the distance the rod travels on the forward cast to the back cast, on the forward cast to the back cast. Here I am using the triangle method again, stopping over the yellow cone, stopping over the red cone. But I'm using the correct stroke length to unroll this 14 foot of line out of the tip of the rod. That is stroke length. Put into a very basic formula, the greater the amount of line we have out the rod tip, the greater the stroke length needs to be. Let's have a look now. 10 foot rod. I've got approximately 23 feet of line out the tip now. Now let's see this stroke length that we used for 14 feet. Let's keep it the same. Let's see if it works for 23 feet. It's not, is it? The line's falling on the floor. So again, we can make two decisions. We can hit it harder, which most people do, and you get this noise, whip cracking effect, and the line bouncing around everywhere. You snap flies off and your leader lands in a heap because there's too much energy. There's an explosion of energy at the end of the cast and it bounces back on itself and lands in a heap. Or we know the better solution is to increase our stroke length. So now I'm gonna move my rod tip past the yellow cone and past the red cone. I've increased my stroke length. Now, it's a little bit difficult for me to do the way I'm stood facing you. We've talked about stance before. I'm gonna use open stance because it means that I can turn to face the back cast and I can lean into the forward cast, which gives me the greater stroke length that I'm looking for. So let's try that now. 23 feet of line out the tip, no more energy, just a longer stroke length. You can see that I'm actually putting some body movement into it as well. And the line, there's no whip cracking. There's no bad sort of wiggles in the line. It's all looking pretty nice, stop and drop. Increasing your stroke length. Let's talk about distance, okay. Here we are, we've got some line hanging on the floor here, and we know that we want to shoot that line. But if I make a back cast and shoot it straight away, it dribbles out, it hasn't really got any energy. And that's because all of the head of the fly line 
wasn't out of the rings when I made the forward cast. So what I need to do is I need to feed more line out of the rod and make a false cast to do so. Let's put that into practice, okay? I've got 23 feet of line out of the tip. I've retrieved the fly to my feet, nothing's took. I wanna cast further, I wanna cast out further again. So I'm gonna start with a stroke length about this. But look at my left hand. Now I'm gonna feed, there you go, feed, feed that head into the false cast above me. Now look at my stroke length, it's much greater. And now I'm gonna release the line. And now all of it's shot. Let's do that again. Let's strip the fly back, strip the fly back, strip the fly back. So this time we've got about 15 feet of line out of the tip. Now that stroke length is enough to cast 15 feet of line, but it's not enough to load the rod. I've got to feed another 15 feet into my force cast before the lo rod's loaded properly. So here I am feeding, but in tandem with that, look at my stroke length increasing at the same time. There you go, now I've got the full head out and now I'm gonna shoot and the whole running line goes out. So I'm changing my stroke length as I'm feeding line into the false cast. Now, that is something that I see a lot of people falling foul of. What they do is, here's say 23 feet of line out the tip now. They start casting, they want some more distance. They know they've got to feed more line out. So they feed more line out, but they're not increasing their stroke length and it becomes unmanageable. You can't see over there, but there's a great big sort of tailing loop and it all landed in a heap. And we got a whip crack at the end. It's because I didn't have enough stroke length to unroll the line fully. And it whipped round on itself on the back cast and created this lion tamer's whip crack effect. Let me show you that again. You retrieve in, retrieve in, nothing's took. You start casting, here's your stroke length. You don't change it, you feed line in, you put more energy in, and you turn into a line tamer. Here's how it should be done. You retrieve the fly, you retrieve the fly, nothing's taking. You've got 23 to three feet of line out the tip, smooth lift up, here's your stroke length for 23, Here's your stroke length for 27. Here's your stroke length for 30. And then smoothly fire that long straight fly line out which extends the leader. The ability to change your stroke length as you false cast and feed line into that cast is an advanced skill. And it's, when you see people making fly casting look effortless, it's because you'll notice that they're using their bodies and increasing their stroke length to accommodate for the extending line out of the tip of the rod. That's stroke length. Let me show you another. Let's pull that wasted line in. All it does is catch on with flip-flops. This is a good tip, by the way. If you want to measure your fly line, double it over like that so I've got... 10 foot out the tip and then 10 foot leading to the tip again. So I've got approximately 21 feet of line out the tip that I know of. Watch this for stroke length. That's not casting the whole fly line, is it? Increase it. It's getting better, but it's still not it. Increase it more. Get that whip crack, don't we? Now increase it more. No whip crack. And it's going out perfectly. Let's reverse that process and watch the line fail. Decrease the stroke length. You see? Stroke length increases for the amount of line you have out of the tip of the rod. And that changes if you are feeding line into your false cast and trying to go for distance. Understand that and you get a style and a sort of elegance into your casting, which makes it look effortless. But more than that, it's the proper way to fly cast. 
to extend your stroke length. We don't fire a fly line out with energy and power. We unroll it. And to unroll that fly line to our target, we need to use the rod tip to stroke it out. That's why it's called stroke, stroke, stroke. That is stroke length in a nutshell.